Hello, my name is Preston. I'm an artist and a landscape architect. Today I'm at Horton Grove Nature Preserve in Durham, North Carolina, looking at natural precedents for screening. When people think about evergreen screening, they think of often a continuous row of evergreen trees, but looking at the environments around me, I don't often see evergreen trees here organizing themselves in clean, neat rows. Where I do see thick evergreen screening here in natural environments in North Carolina, I'll see them sometimes around the coast on dunes or in Pocosins and I'll often see it in the mountains with rhododendron. Here in the Piedmont, we don't have that many species of evergreen shrubs. So even if I don't see evergreen shrubs, what kind of lessons can I learn here at Horton Grove? Just looking at the tools I have to work with here, I see pine like loblolly pine, though I might use longleaf pine instead. I also see the red cedar, Juniperus virginiana, and the suggestion of adding red cedar to the landscape might make friends of mine in environmental restoration just cringe. They're often trying their hardest to remove it, but in the urban and suburban environment, it can be a really important evergreen species, not only for screening, but also providing nesting opportunities and resources for songbirds. Hands down, my favorite evergreen tree here at Horton Grove is the American Holly. It prefers a little bit of shade, and you'll find it in the first layers of the forest here, often in lowland areas or where there's a little bit of extra moisture in the soil. The kind of screening I'm trying to create can't be done by just toggling three evergreen tree species. I need more vertical layers, particularly closer to the ground. I might include shrubs and understory trees that I'm seeing mingled in with these evergreen trees. Also, I can't forget my ground cover layer. These grasses, forbs, sedges, and rushes that not only help with erosion control and providing resources to pollinators and birds, but they also help stabilize conditions in the soil, which allow for more availability of nutrients and water that'll help your screening trees grow faster. So how would I build my screen based on what I'm seeing? Well, I would begin with my structural plants and the tallest species, which would be the pine, which I'd arrange at relatively regular intervals. And between the pine, I'd begin to add the next tallest species, which would be red cedar. And between the red cedars and the pines, I would add American holly and then begin building my seasonal color layer through large shrubs and understory trees. And then I would begin building my ground cover layer, my green mulch. So why am I going to all this trouble to use natural precedents to inform my screens that might otherwise be really simple or basic to design? Well, it's because I have faith that native species and natural arrangements can bring resources I can't even imagine to wildlife I didn't even know was there.